Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean, and today we got to talk about this situation out of Tampa Bay, Florida, where a man that I never heard of, a rapper called Nardo Wick, had a fan approach him after a concert, and then his entourage violently assaulted this person, put him in the hospital with a concussion and a brain bleed, and it turns out that this fan was only asking to take a photograph with a musician that he respected. It's absolutely horrific. The video is hard to watch, but we got to discuss all of the ways that this is being covered because I think it's being misconstrued in a few ways and people aren't focusing on the most crucial aspects of this case and the fact that the rapper, even though he's apologetic, doesn't appear at this moment in time to be doing anything to bring justice to the situation. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to everybody who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you give me the money. OK. And thank you to the podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple and Google's podcasting platform. Where do you so I have to cut this video right here because of the violent nature of it. It will cause an age restriction and then almost nobody will see this video. But as you can see, the individual who was attacked is the white person, by the way, is approaching the rapper calmly. No big deal. Doesn't appear to be threatening at all whatsoever. But to give you context, it is about 1.15 in the morning after the show. And then you see somebody come up, pull his hood over his face. So he's already decided that he's going to attack him, get behind him and to the left of him, according to this video, although different angles have it flipped, and then deliver a sucker punch against this person. Now, it seems like he's already dazed after this sucker punch when another individual from from the entourage decides to attack the defenseless man because two on one sucker punching somebody is apparently better than one vicious scumbag like attack and apparently the rapper the nando guy whatever his name is who really cares is there he's actually in the white and supposedly he said chill and he's going to describe what he was doing later and i believe it's gray not white but if you want to watch the full video it's linked in the description of this video from both angles so you you can see it for yourself and by the way it's linked under the word sources for those of you who write me comments saying that you couldn't possibly find the video even though they're all labeled there i don't condone that situation that happened i don't stand for that situation to happen i was fully on what that situation was about to take place Feel me? As soon as it happened, I shot the escalate situation. So this is Nando responding to this situation as he calls it on his Instagram live, saying he was unaware of the attack prior to the attack, which I actually believe because this guy comes out of nowhere. There doesn't appear to be any signaling between Nando and this person. And he's like, listen, I tried calling the mom and asking how he was doing and if there was anything I can do to make this situation all right. And after the situation, I, I, I got in contact with his mom. I sent him my number. I called, asked how he was doing. I told her I'd do anything to make it up to him as a fan. You feel me? I, I told her to keep me updated on his health. And, and, and it ain't about trying to stop nothing from happening because I don't want to get with nothing. It ain't none of that. You feel me? I genuinely care about the fan. That's all I'm worrying about right now. I don't give a damn about it. Like, wait, everybody talking about it. Now, this is at the point in time of the video where I tell you how this young man is doing, who, by the way, is 20 years old, just wanted a photo with his favorite rapper. And apparently, he has a severe concussion. He's in critical condition. He has a brain bleed because of the vicious attack and possibly could be elevated to attempted murder. This was Florida. I should expect some better charges than just a simple batter based on the fact that he dared approach this rapper now i also want to point out that a lot of people are trying to make this a black white issue they're saying that this kid was attacked because he was white or white kids shouldn't be fans of rap music or anything like that never meet your black heroes this is how they act and to be clear there appears to be no racial motivation for this and based on the rates of violence within the black community i can say that it's quite possible that this kind of situation would have happened had it been a 20 year old black kid who approached nando because nando appears to be surrounding him himself with a bunch of violent thugs now look you might disagree with that analysis but one need only look again at the violent crime rates within the black community to understand that this is something that happens a lot 
And the most notable portion of this, in my opinion, is that this is a celebrity's entourage rather than the fact of that this person was white. If this were a standard, regular, ordinary instance of the knockout game where white people are targeted by black people or Asian people are targeted by black people, then we would be having a different conversation. But this just appears to be some thug looking for an opportunity to attack somebody that was associated with this rapper and this young man was unfortunately a fan of the wrong person somebody who surrounds himself with these violent criminals and he bared the brunt of those consequences however this does not let nando wick off the hook he could talk about how it's a situation and he was unaware of it and he tried to de-escalate it but from what i'm seeing in the reporting and again this is just in the reporting and my perception of it it appears that he has not identified the perpetrators behind this. In the Instagram Live video, he didn't identify which member of his entourage initiated the attack, which member continued the attack, or anything like that. So he can say he's sorry and he wants to make it up to the family, but until you submit the name for these two individuals that, by the way, the police are looking for, I'm not buying it. Either you're okay with it, you're co-signing it, or you want to say, oh, I'm not a snitch, or anything like that like that or you're not okay with your fans being attacked and you turn over the thugs and criminals who perpetrated this attack in your name and by the way to the extent that he's not revealing information to the police, I would charge him with an accessory after the fact. They had to have gotten away somehow, and he is aiding and abetting their getting away. So I would definitely make some consequences for this individual as well, whether or not he spoke to the mother or not. I genuinely care about the fan. That's all I'm worrying about right now. I don't give a damn about like what everybody talking about, talking about. Sue, sue, sue. I don't care about that. They're they going to do it. They got to do what they do what they do. You feel me? Right now, I'm worrying about the fan makes he's straight. And I, you feel me? I just want him to know that I ain't condone that. I ain't want that to happen. That ain't how I treat my fans. I love my fans. You feel me? Yeah, if you genuinely care about the fan when he is at risk of dying, critical condition with brain bleeding and a severe concussion, then you would do the right thing and turn over the perpetrators in this crime. And people are saying, oh, you're going to get sued. You're going to get sued. Like, this guy is the victim of this. When he surrounded himself with these thuggish individuals and they attacked this guy for approaching him. Now, I don't know this guy. I don't know if he's super famous. I don't know if he's minorly famous because I don't know anything about rap music at all whatsoever. But the idea and i've had situations when people approach me so this doesn't come out of nowhere that if somebody approached me in real life and then somebody i knew when this person was not a threat just asking for a picture would then sucker punch that person that approached me and then another person that i know would attack him again totally without provocation and i would run defense for those people is insane and absurd in every possible way. If you're with me, if you're my long-term friends, and by the way, my friends I've known for 20 plus years, the people I consider that close to me, and you did something like this, I'm not going to stand by you. I'm not going to support you or anything like that. I am definitely going to say you're not associated with me and make actual tangible steps to prove that, not call your mother and ask for updates on your health as you could potentially die from the vicious attack that was initiated by my entourage. Now, what I will do, by the way, if you approach me in real life and you ask me if I'm actual justice warrior or if I'm Sean and I'm wearing my merch shirt and I'm clearly the guy that you're asking about is deny it initially and see if you have the courage to double down on your assertion and call me a liar in public and then I'll take a photo with you. That, that, that's what I would do in this situation if I were this rapper because that's how I handle situations like this because I find that to be hilarious but that is as far as it will go in terms of mistreatment of people out there in the audience. I don't rock like that at all. You feel me? I wasn't gangster. I wasn't cool. I didn't know that was going to happen. You feel me? I didn't expect that to happen. I love all my fans. I welcome all my fans with open arms. Now, he's talking about how much he loves his fans and all that, and in my opinion, when you're not turning over the perpetrators, when you're not identifying them in the public, when they're on the loose and you're not showing their faces, even though you're the person with the platform, that all rings hollow. That all rings false because it is hollow, because it is false, because it is a lie, because he doesn't actually care. He should be seeking out justice on behalf of this person, who, again, 
could potentially die. You giving your number to his mother so she can call you and you could talk to her about how you're not going to turn over the perpetrators of this heinous act, this attempted murder. Not really good enough in my opinion. I'm not really on board with it. Sorry, Nando Wick. Your fame should not get you out of responsibility and culpability for this situation. Whether or not you can mutter out some vague words of sympathy with a monotone voice and no emotion in it or not. You feel me? After the situation happened, I was mad as hell. You feel me? I got in contact with his mama that same night. I checked on him. I asked. I told her anything he need. You feel me? I got on. You feel me? Before anything was posted, before any video was seen, before any blog posted, before she posted anything, then I reached out to her. I checked on him. You feel me? So right here we have him saying, listen, before there was a viral video, before anybody was talking about it, before she posted anything on social media, I called her. I said, hey, if you need anything, I got you. Don't worry about it. I'm on board for you and I'm on your team. I got into contact and all that because I'm such a good person and this will never happen again. And any of my fans can come up to me and take pictures with me. But honestly, not really interested in any of that. The only thing that would interest me about this conversation, if it actually took place before the videos went viral, Viral is how he described it to the mother before the videos went viral, before we could actually see it from the objective view of the camera. That's the only part in that category that actually interests me. And as far as what happened in this situation, the other question I would like to know the answer of is what happened to this guy after he was left on the pavement? The videos that we have are five seconds and eight seconds long, but presumably this guy who was unconscious in the pavement needed an ambulance. Did the rapper who loves his fans so much call the ambulance? Did he wait there for the ambulance to get there, make sure this guy was loaded safely into the hospital? Or did he flee the scene? Did he abandon his fan that he loves so much, take off and try to get away with it, and only come out with public statements after the video went viral and he was caught dead to rights? I'm really interested to know at what state this person was actually left in, this so-called fan that he cares so much about. I would really want to see that for myself. Now look, I don't really have a lot more to add to this story. Obviously, it's an ongoing case, but again, I do think the important questions are if Nando had nothing to do with this and he doesn't co-sign it or whatever, why isn't he identifying the perpetrators of this? Why are the police still looking for two unnamed individuals when these people were a part of his entourage? when he knows these people. He felt comfortable enough to grab one of them during the assault in order to prevent further assault. I want to know the answers to that question. I'm wishing this young man a speedy recovery. But I also want to know what you guys think. This whole mess of a situation, as it's called by the rapper. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you like this video, show my leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support review the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about Nando Wick's entourage attacking and and sucker punching a fan viciously till next time.